find a pen and fill the paper with the message that it wants to send. Continuing my conversation with Meryl Tengsdahl about her book, Shatter the Sky, and lots of other things. We Shatter the Sky. <laughs> you guys, you guys have me a screenshot of that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll just use that as my cover for the. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to talk about how this book was birthed, uh, you know, down into the weeds on that, because, you know, you talked about at the beginning um, of the conversation about how you had started writing it. Then you had a, a, one ghost writer that you were working with and then you moved to another. So yes. to walk me through the, you know, the gestation of this book for you, how did it start? How much did you write? So it's, it's really started. I did not write anything like it was just a thought, right? So my friend of mine, a mentor, she's in, she's written in the book, uh, Dr. Croach, uh, beautiful woman. Great. She kept pressing me. She's like, you need to write a book. You need to write a book. I'm like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I, I just, I, I always say, I don't look at myself, how other people look at me. Like, I'm just totally, I totally downplay myself. Like I purposely, I'll say it's a purpose thing. I put a blind spot up. Like I know my accomplishments. I know what I do, but I don't, I, I put it up as a blind spot to remain humble and to always think that I have more to do. So when someone says, Hey, write a book. I, you know, I just like, I blow it off. And the only, and when tough as nails interview process was going on, and there was a potential and, and I was listening to the producers and um, Louise and Phil and what the premise of the show was. And I started thinking, well, if my story goes out there to inspire people, I need to follow this up with a book. This was just the this is what I needed to do. If if this was, you know, when I had to make the decision, did I really want to put myself out there because the world could be incredibly cruel. Right. So they can judge and they could do stuff if I do that then I need to get the full story out. And so I called up Meryl and I said, look, I know you had someone who you thought can help me write the story. I'm interested. And she was all happy. She's like, yay, yay. So, so let me introduce you. So she introduced me to uh, this person. And we began interviewing, just like doing Zoom calls, but we, you know, another platform where it transcribes stuff. And she would ask me a lot of interview questions. So um, we did that for several months. This probably started somewhere in June and it lasted up until I got the final call to come out to LA for tough as nails for the so final this is June of 2019. This is June of 2020. 2020. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yep. So we interview all the way up to that. And when I find out I made it on the show, I, I told the the, the ghostwriter, I said, um, hey, when I come back, I'd like to see a draft because there was a lot of information. I mean, we talked extensively for hours on end. I mean, I remember one time we had probably an eight hour interview. Whew. Yes. And don't get me wrong, this person asked great questions and we dove into a lot of things. I mean, I have, you know, I had journals, I had stuff. So for me, this was a very, very deep personal process for me because I exposed a lot of myself in these talks. Um, a lot, you know, just everything. Like I put everything out there. I was very transparent about the person I am because I wanted to. Because again, this was about showing people where you come from. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have all these things handed to you. You can work hard and, and accomplish stuff. And so I did the show <clears throat> and I came back and we had a discussion and I said, I would, you know, I want to see the draft or what you have or outline and nothing was produced during that time. So at that point, I knew just my military mind works, right? There's there's milestones we need to make 
And if you're not making those on those milestones as a civilian, I'm like, yeah, I need to find someone who's going to do that. So we separated our ways. Um, this person was pursuing some other things and, and their life was changing. But, uh, you know, I was like, OK, let's move on. Yeah. And that opened the door for I was talking to another good friend of mine. Um, and he said, hey, well, you know, my brother writes. And I go, yes. And his brother, Lance Thompson, uh, my friend Tad, he said, well, you know, maybe Lance be available. And I knew Lance. I've known Lance for a couple of years, but I knew he was working some projects. He does a lot of military history writing. He's an actor. Um, he teaches classes. He does a lot of he does a lot of things. So I gave him a call and I was like, hey, Lance, um, this is what's going on. I have all this information. Would you like to look through? And he goes, well, I have some time. He's like, when will you need it? And I said, as soon as possible. And he's like, he's like, well, let's, you know, let's set up a structure how we're going to do this. So we did. We uh, went into an agreement of what he was going to, he was going to be a work for hire. He was going to go through some of the transcripts and all that. And um, he said, well, when do you want this? And I said, can you do it in a month? Or we, uh, I don't know if I said a month, but we agreed on, he said he could do it in a month. And I was like, yes, let's go. Let's do this. So we did. We worked hard for, he came out with an outline almost quickly, um, which is why it's broken up into four parts. He came up with those parts and then we started filling in and he started writing the story and we'd go back and forth. We'd edit back and forth. And within a month time, we had a manuscript done. And then what did you do with that? Um, I started looking around for potential people to publish it. So at that time, I had picked up, um, I have a speaking agent. Um, this was, so we finished around the month. We started right, we started in January of, or right before January of 2021, February 2021, it was done. Toughest Nails aired after the Super Bowl. I think in January, they announced the cast. And then they did, they did a whole bunch of commercials. So, I mean, my phone blew up the day of the Super Bowl after the halftime show. After the weekend appeared. And then they put this, this commercial on it. And I was talking. Yeah. I, yeah, I remember that day like it was yesterday. It was incredible. It was incredible. Like my jaw dropped and I was trying to take a video of the, the commercial and my phone exploded. Like it would not stop for the next 20 minutes. Like all these texts were coming in. They're like, what? You're going to be on the show. Did I just hear your voice? Like all these people out of the woodwork from anywhere. It was it was kind of amazing and crazy. And uh, so. So February, the manuscript was done. Tough as nails aired in February. I picked up a speaking agent with Harry Walker during that time. It's part of WME. WME has a literary department. I sent the manuscript over there for them to look at and to give me some feedback and see if it was something that they were interested in. That process took about two months. And when she gave the feedback I got from that, the literary department, it was just like these broad strokes. And I was a little frustrated. I was like, what the heck is this? Why did I wait so long? for for this and um there was nothing more about it so i was like you know what i'll find some other way maybe independent publishing i started looking into the pros and cons of independent publishing vice publishing with um traditional yeah yeah traditional publishing and I, I said maybe this is the way to go in the meantime i was doing speaking engagements um a lot of virtual engagements uh, CBS Veterans Network asked me to be an ambassador. So I was doing some stuff for them. And one of the, we had like a coffee talk with vets where I was participating with, with another lady who worked, who was helping CBS VetNet. She was a marketing person. She had, her and I were talking to the vets. And at the end I said, Hey, do you have some time to talk to me? I, 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 I need your, I'd like your recommendation on some marketing tips. We spoke offline for about half an hour. I said, hey, I'm trying to get this book and do this. How should I market? And she said, 
uh, she was like, well, this is what you could do. She looked at my website and then she said she gave me some tips. She goes, hey, I'd like for you to talk to my mom who just published a book. And I said, oh, OK. And so I talked to her mom and we talked for a while, had a good relationship. She goes, let me introduce you to the person who helped me publish my book, produce my book. Mm-hmm. And then she connected me to Marav, who's you know, in charge of Maverick um, Production Company. And Marav and I spoke. Uh, we had a Zoom call. And I said, you know, she told me what she does. And I said, I would love to send you my manuscript. And I remember she said to me, um, OK, send it to me. This was Friday. She goes, I'll take a look at it. She goes, I treat every I treat every um, draft as a, a, a she didn't say crappy, but I'll say it for just not cursing a crappy first draft. And yeah. she said, I'll get back to you. And I go, oh, OK, great. So I sent it to her. Because at this point, you have a manuscript and you're very close hold and you're scared yeah. about who you're going to send it to because you don't, sure. never know what's going to happen. But this was through, you know, some connections that I knew were legit. So that's. So that was Friday. She said she'd get back to me on Monday. Saturday morning, I was I was on the phone talking to a friend of mine. We we're going to do some content, uh, content creation for myself for just speaking engagements and stuff because he 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 has drones. So I've met a lot of people doing all this stuff. So yeah, I, he uh, I met him at the gym. He did drone shots and he wanted to do some stuff for me pro bono. So I was like, yes, we're going to meet today. We're going to get a couple of shots and. And as we were talking, an email popped in from Marav and she goes, OK, this is not a crappy first draft. And she laid out this whole thing about what she thought was, you know, good, great, what needed work. And she said, I would love this is what I can offer you. This is what I could do. She said, uh, we can have this process done in one month. October 10 could be the date, the release of your book. And so this happened in September, right? So, and I read all that she said and I was shocked. I I felt really good. Um, And I was like, wow, Uh, okay. So we got on the phone, we talked and then we went into the process. She took the manuscript. She's also a ghostwriter for a couple of publications that were extremely, uh, yeah, just, well known and she uh she basically took the manuscript kept the the main structure the four parts and then started breaking things out and started seeing like the threads that she could weave a little better into it into the story um she recommended the vignettes okay and at first i balked at that but then as I, you know, she, her and I, we go back and forth with each other. If, if I agreed or disagreed, we'd go back and forth. So uh, she talked me into the vignettes as I thought about it, as I thought about how younger people absorb content. It yeah. made more sense. Yeah. The uh, title of the book, Shatter the Sky, I think I put that in my acknowledgments at the end. My friend Jen um, You know, I was like, oh, what should the title be? And my friend Jen always she makes fun of me whenever she gets the chance, which is very few and far between. And I tell her a couple of stuff. She goes, oh, that's stupid. Like she basically said, oh, that's dumb. That's (laughs) how about shattering the sky? And I'm like. And I was quiet and she goes, you like that, don't you? And I go, I do. I hate you right now. (laughs) 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 But um. But then it changed to shatter the sky because it was based off another story I t- talk I tell in there about the ING. The ING. Word. Yeah. Yeah. So the ING word. So that made much more sense. So look, this was, you know, the, this was a you know great job done by Lance Thompson to take transcripts of another person that I was talking to. Yeah. And weave this and put this great story and take out the great nuggets because he didn't even. I have to tell you, it was probably over a hundred hours of interviewing and he took, yeah, he took about a third of that, maybe, maybe a third, maybe a quarter of it and just made this incredible story. And then Marav with her publishing and her, 
you know, production of books, she was able to weave things together in a more, I don't want to say emotional way, but just to touch people more the way I would want people to respond to it. So uh, the short vignette style, I like it because you could put the book down, but you'll remember the story and you could come back and start another story. And it's not a, a big deal. Like all people had all these ideas yeah. and some I took, some I didn't. And, you know, it's just like being a commander, right? People give you input, but at the end of the day, you want this product that represents who you are. And uh, that's how the process went. So within a month, not only did she make those changes, um, you know, she packaged it. Um, she has a team of people. The, the cover itself was a portrait of me in the Pentagon. So the artist has allowed, you know, has given me free reign of how I use the picture. And I told him, you know, I asked for permission to put it on the book cover, which he was more than happy to say yes. So that is an oil painting. Yeah. When um, you told me that, I was like, what? It yes. looks like it's gorgeous. What yes. a wonderful portrait. My God. Yeah, Chris, Chris Hopkins, the, um, uh, yeah. the artist, he is, uh, he's phenomenal. He, Go to chrishopkins.com and uh, this is a plug for him. Um, he does a lot of Tuskegee artwork. Um, he's amazing. Like he's amazing. His oil paintings are great. Yeah. So, um, so yes. Yeah, so October 10th was the date. And, you know, Marav took me through that process, how to put it on, how to self-publish on Amazon, what to type up. She came up with the, the blurbs, the keywords, she taught me all about that process. So, you know, in our discussion, when we talked, I said, I want to know how the sausage is made because I was frustrated. I was frustrated dealing with, you know, someone in the, in the publication world who came back and gave me this very broad stroke critique about the book and, and nothing else, even though I asked her to look at it, but I wanted to, I wanted to see what was behind the curtain. And I, and I have a, now I have, I, I got educated for on how to do that. So it's um, it was great that I was I was fortunate enough to find the right people and to find the right writers. And uh, that's how the book came about. And we published it two days ahead of schedule. So, you know, um, I have been a student of this evolution for the past year, learning from different writers and different models um, of storytelling and ways to construct a memoir and ways to publish it. Um, and I was completely panicked for you when you reached out to me in September and told me that you, because when you, you called, you were like, so the book's coming out in October. And I was thinking, oh, great. October, 2022. That's perfect. You have a year to do all of your, and you were like, no, 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 no. In a month. And I was like, oh, no, 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 don't do it like that, please. But, you know, after talking to you and understanding sort of this, you are, a unique story all around. Um, and in particular, uh, in the way in which this story or the push that sent you over the edge to actually publish a book. And, and what, why I'm saying all of this is because I'm thinking about our other women in aviation and the incredible stories and experiences that are out there. And the women like you, especially our women of color who are fab fabulous and fantastic role models and who have had gloriously successful careers. And I can think of a few names right off the top of my head who, and I guarantee people have told them, you need to write a book, you need to write a book. And they're, whatever is holding them back, they don't want to write. They don't want to put themselves out there. They don't know how all this stuff. Like my hope is that we give them tools through this medium to, to show other people who have done it. Your story though is a little unique and you, you had this commercial um, push from doing the show that sent you over the edge to want to explain your story. Um, you had timelines, publication timelines that are generally unrealistic in the publishing world. Um, you made them happen. And, you know, the book is wonderful. 
I think it's, I, I think it achieves the things that you talk about, like wanting to be, um, digestible for younger people, but also telling enough of the story for the rest of us. Um, and then I will say that some of our, you know, military women were hoping for a little deeper dive and hopefully we've given them a little bit of that in our conversation today. Um, but, uh, this idea that you're gonna get a book done that quickly is very unusual. There are resources that are out there. There are, um, ghost writers. I have interviewed one of them. Um, and you can find that on the website and she seems great. And I've considered this idea of, of, uh, actually co-authoring someone else's work. So I'm learning from that relationship and that trust that you need the way that you talked about being completely open, um, and putting it all out there from everyone, every partnership that I've talked to about, you know, co-authoring or ghostwriting, that's that trust and that, um, that willingness to be completely vulnerable and give more material than it will actually be in print is super important. What I want to know from you is what, if you could go back and do anything differently, what would it be? And what advice do you have for the women who are out there who are, were like you are like you, who are role models, who have all this experience to share, but they don't have this push of a television show to get them over the edge. What would you say to them to convince them to tell their stories? Right. So what, what I learned in the process to do this is one, uh, again, I picked a ghost. I wanted the ghost writer because for me, it's hard to write about myself in, in this way. So um, choose your writers carefully. Um, you know, the first, I, I think I wasted a considerable, ma- a considerable amount of time with my first ghost writer. The original plan was to have the book out during the tough as nails going. That was, that was the plan. So I knew it was pretty aggressive. Um, and, you know, fell short of that, but, um, I think the product is a lot better. So, um, you know, I was told by the first ghostwriter, Hey, trust the process. And I did, and I got burnt for it. So um, I learned later that there are people out there that will actually hit timelines and, you know, in, interview your writers well, if you're going to have someone do that or help you. Um, Lance was, you know, awesome because I knew him. I had known him before. Uh, I've known him for, you know, a couple of years. We had, we had spoken. He was at Beale. I, I took him on a, um, a tour of Beale when he was out here. He in turn got me up to Idaho to do a speaking engagement at the University of um, at the University of Idaho at Boise. So I knew him and his wife incredibly well. So he knew me, and I had already told him some stories. So it was very it was a very good fit because we got along really well. Um. I think I would, I still would have gone independent publishing. I, th- I think the timeline for traditional publishing is, is um, really long. Like it's, it's could be like a two year process. And um, I'm for good or bad. I'm a little impatient with that. And I, I felt that if I had gone that way and I had other editors get involved, I think they would have, um, you know, wash down the stories too much. And I don't think it would have been the same realistic kind of funny. Maybe there would have been more emphasis on my relationship with, I I don't know which way it would have gone, but I think it would have been more washed out than anything. So that's why I wanted to do it the independent route. And, and that's, and that choice is everyone makes different choices as pros and cons. You have someone editing that's a publishing company like a, a random house or something, you know, they're going to get it out there. Um, I'm responsible for my own marketing. 
So that's that's another thing. Um, but again, I do have that show behind me to help push in those directions. And that's why I thought the independent publishing would go better. Um, but you also have social media, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. You have all those avenues. And if you have the time and you're willing to pursue those, that might be the marketing platform for you. Um, I have lately um, hired someone to do PR work for me. I still have Harry Walker that, you know, talks about me and is still working those things. So, and this stuff is, it's not free for the most part. So you're going to have to pay for it. You're going to have to pay for the ghostwriter. Um, that was a work for hire. You're going to have to pay for the uh, book production. That's a work for hire. Um, but, you know, she helps produce and, and pro she called it production, but it's production slash producing because she takes she elevates that book to the next level and and shows you buzzwords and keywords and stuff. So I'm still learning in this process. And if I went traditional, I probably wouldn't have to. I would just sit back. But again, I have more control and more control over my life and how the book goes. So I could go this week to San Antonio and do a book signing. Um, you know, I have, you know, it's, it's on, you know, after I did Amazon exclusive for a short period of time. Now I, I branched out and went with Ingram Sparks to do the publishing so I could get in the Barnes and Nobles and all those other things. Good. So I would, I would just have a game plan. Now, knowing what I know, I would have had a better game plan and how things would have flown, uh, how, how things would have flowed. I think, yes, there was an element of luck for me and I met the right people. Um, doesn't mean that the process was any easier emotionally for me. It was daunting. I mean, there, I had a lot of sleepless nights and you, you saw it that last month. You saw a version of the book before yeah. it was done and you had these comments, but I was like, man, we already did another yeah. six iterations. It was, yeah. it was wild. It was, you know, version control was very important. And, you know, I kept reliving some of these stories and, you know, just it was emotionally draining and taxing. And, you know, my moods would swing up and down. Yeah, it was crazy. But it was worth it. Well, there was more to that question that I'm going to come back to. But but on the things that you just talked about right now, I, I want to say a couple of things. First of all, um, what I am observing and learning from this is that the publishing route that you go and I, and I'm, well, it, it applies to all books, you know, the, the, the decisions that you make about how you're going to write or get assistance in the writing of your work, and then how you choose to publish that book. And then, you know, how you choose to engage with the market with a platform of some sort are all choices that you're making as an author publishing a book and will affect sales. It will affect the audience, uh, the, the scope of the audience that you potentially will reach. And so, you know, you can start with the writing. If you are not somebody who is a strong writer and you don't choose, you are not interested in pursuing that as like, you know, your next thing in life um, or as a hobby, then get some help with it. If you are a writer, you think you're a writer, get critique partners and get some help and then do go to workshops and then make sure that you get an editor. Like, because every Every time you decide not to do one of those things, you are going to further limit your audience. And for you, when I talked about you being unique, um, you had this platform. So you had like the cart before the horse. You had a platform first. Therefore, you had a market for your book. Most writers and most of our, you know, peers in the industry who are maybe hitting retirement have stories and want to put them out there. They may be well known inside the aviation circles and they may be able to market to this circle. But if you want to get outside of it, you know, you had a platform, you had a way for your story to get out there. 
a traditional publisher is going to help you with that. You, you need to think about like, who do you want to impact? Who do you want to hear your story? What is important to you? And then make those choices. Um, I just feel like I, I'm watching just sort of the, the breadth of the sort of canon of our books and learning from them. And I just want writers or people who are thinking about telling their story to really know that each one of these things is a choice. And depending on the choices that you make and depending on the audience that you want to reach, you know, you can improve your odds by doing different things. Um, I also wanted to say for people in your shoes where you're doing all this, you're going through this process and learning really fast. I, uh, there's a great resource called the women in publishing summit. And I think I sent you a couple of their workshops yes. that you did, but they, it, they are doing really great stuff. They've got it all out there. Alexa big Wharf, and very reasonable prices compared to like, you know, going to get a master's degree and all this stuff. Um, and, and, yeah, I mean, once you've got the writing done and you're going to publish, I feel like they've got some really, really great resources. Right. So, yeah, she sent me some information. So to learn about the audiobook aspect. Right. So, um, you know, I did some research on that and, you know, I'll let you know how that comes, you know, how that comes out. I mean, you could tell by the mic here that I purchased a mic specifically to do that. I do have a digital recorder because I did music before. I found a, a college student who is getting a certificate in audio engineering. So I want, you know, I'm trying to go maybe a cheaper route to see, because all this is, is just you talking in a very sterile environment with good sound quality and having someone edit that and just put it together and break it up into the parts. You know, there's a little bit of finesse to that, but it shouldn't be super expensive where you're paying, you know, $200 an hour in a sound booth trying to get this done. So, you know, we have enough technology. Audiobooks are, you know, this market. I think they talked about how big audiobooks and, and podcasts and how much money is possible in there. So that's what I'm looking at next. I just have to stop traveling and get off my butt and actually do it. So that's where the discipline military part comes in, which I'm, I'm ready, you know, ready to do. Um, but yeah, this yeah, has so many ways to go about it. Um, I, I'm glad I had the platform. Um, I even as part of it, you know, my my recommendation, the recommendations I was getting from Marav was like, hey, get your audience involved, whoever your audience is, whether it's on Facebook or on Instagram, to be part of the book, to be part of the process. So like the back cover of the book is a picture that I had my my Instagram people pick our followers pick on the back of the book. I had like A, B, C, D, which, which picture do you it. want? I picked it. <laughs> I voted for that one. And, and some people like, you need a professional one, you know, make it mm -hmm. professional. And I was like, well, this book is for other people. So, you know, we're going it, to, it's the whole thing was not traditional. So why would I change in any way? Yeah. Well, so, <laughs> so, what about those ladies out there who have a story have and a story they, and everybody's telling them they need to write a book. You know what? Just listen to them and go do it. You no, know, it's going to be a pain. You don't want to. Yeah, just do it. It you will be happy that you did. I'm I'm really. I'm really happy and grateful that I, I did it. Um, the process was you know, it was different for me. It was uncomfortable, but, you know, for people who have cool stories, go take a dive in the sea of uncomfortableness and start doing the backstroke and start, you know, just, <laughs> <laughs> just start swimming. It'll be okay. And, uh, even if you just find someone to interview you and ask you the deep thought questions about why, you know, figure out, you know, who you want to target, why you want to write it, even though you don't want to write it. But if you did write a book about your story, what do you want the world to know about you? And then have someone interview you. And then you'll find that 
okay, yeah, maybe they're right. Maybe I should write the story. That's great. I love that. I feel like you mentioned um, the possibility of other book ideas. Yes. Um, <laughs> a leadership book. The way, after I've sat here, like, thank you, Meryl, for not writing another leadership book. <laughs> so this one, so it's going to be, it's, it's going to be different. I don't want to get into, I have some ideas, but the leadership book is going to be different. Um, another thing, another book, taking this book that's out there, because this is the basis and uh, doing some illustrative work on it. Okay. Uh, um, and then everyone's like, <laughs> everyone's like, Meryl, do a family book, like a parenting book. Like the title will be How to Raise Your Ungrateful Urchins or something. <laughs> <laughs> something. <laughs> Meryl Tang's doll on parenting. I yeah. love it. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> I have to look forward to that. Yeah. So, you know, some people are like very coddling. This book will not be about that. Well, Meryl, thank you so much for (laughs) sharing your story and for pushing to get this book published and for being so generous with your time with me. I thank you. Uh, Thank you so much. And thank you for, you know, being one of those pushing factors. (laughs) Write the book. Write Write the the book. book. You're writing the book. It's going to be out when? What? (laughs) 